So without further ado, uh, the next up we have Vikas Korikar, Senior Product Owner at Standard Charter. And he will be delivering a very uh, powerful presentation aligning with the connected products theme at this technical stage by the topic building API products for the Indian and global banking ecosystem. And I think this topic is really relevant specifically in these tough times and also with the rapid evolution of digitalization. So once again, very warm welcome to you, Vikas. We can see the slides. Everything is per perfectly working well. So over to you. Hey, thank you, Deeraj, uh, uh, for the warm welcome. And it is my privilege uh, to cover open banking and API product innovation topic here at ABI Days. Uh, I am Vikas. I am a senior product owner uh, at Standard Chartered, uh, and uh, my uh, main agenda is to kind of see how APIs can be thought as products and how open banking is evolving. Uh, I also take care of uh, API governance across the bank and making sure that the API endpoints are not just products, but they are secured enough for our customers to use. So just a little bit background about what we do. We are a 160, 160 year old uh, company bank operates in 59 markets. We employ over 85,000 people across the world in 125 countries. We are one among top 100 largest companies listed on the London Stock Exchange. We also have a good presence in Asia Pacific region. Uh, we have also won a number of um, awards in digital banking and uh, related areas. Our core area is APIification and digitization in banking technologies. Without uh, further ado, let me go to the current trend. I know we are all in the uh, global pandemic. Uh, people are thinking different ways uh, to kind of uh, digitize and use uh, various technologies to disrupt and be relevant in the game. There are several trends that is expanding uh, open APIs in banking. Uh, more than 70% of corporate banks are revisiting most of their digital and uh, remodeling their portfolio. And by 2023, there will be a lot of changes that are happening. Uh, and banks are trying to leverage API technologies. Yeah. And uh, by 2023, 75% of all consumer and small business loans will be originated through APIs or AI enabled endpoints. And technology is very relevant for uh, banks to uh, stay relevant. Now, I just talked about APIs, open APIs, right? Now, there is this open banking terminology. This is not new. This has been there for a few years. But the relevance is only increasing, right? Now, under open banking, banks allow access to uh, data and control of customers' personal and financial data to third-party service providers. This is where banks are becoming open in sharing data. And this is where the innovation is going to kickstart. I mean, it has already started, but it is going to increase in the coming years. Uh, this is where the tech startups, financial uh, startups, right, can add more value. Earlier, different banks had their own uh, siloed uh, digitization uh, journeys. Now, banks are getting part of a larger data aggregation programs. And even the regulators uh, are open and they're making sure that the API is uh, you know, uh, helping the innovation to, to go much faster. Earlier, it used to be slower. And um, now, how are uh, how these APIs, on, APIs uh, open APIs are not new. Now, how is it going to kind of uh, disrupt uh, the game, right? How banks can stay relevant? Now, this is one of the driving forces behind innovation. And by relying networks instead of centralization, open banking can help uh, different service providers to come together and give very innovative uh, solutions. You might have already seen there are apps that help us choose the right uh, loan for my needs. Uh, it helps us to choose the right credit cards. It uh, helps us to choose the right uh, insurance. We are able to compare in the open domain. Earlier, it was not possible. These are all uh, because of these open APIs, which are 
kind of completely disrupting and uh, the remodeled business models right are coming and it is only the customer who is going to benefit from all this now i talked about api innovation disruption but we, let's face it banking is highly regulated and we need to make sure that whatever we do we make sure that the regulators are happy now apis are not just digital endpoints they are in fact need to be thought as products you might have already seen a number of presentations where people say oh apis need to be thought as products we need to follow design principles uh, we need to kind of have an ideation process inception delivery launching to client right obviously this is extremely important there is a five step process that um, the design uh, uh, community uh, you know recommends first is to kind of empathize you know what type of api i am going to release right it is a product ultimately product will have different set of clients do i really empathize with them do do i really understand what problems they are facing or am i just having a bunch of developers designing some restful web services it is not so it is needs to it needs to be thought as a real product right and it has to be incorporated with well feedback loop go with different iterations and make sure that it helps right and many of the uh, the banks and companies are following it api has a design a principle well formed now many companies are still missing is to have the right api governance model right especially in fintech especially in banking these apis need to be well formed all design guidelines need to be formed and more importantly security guidelines if there is a security risk there is a data leakage banks are liable to pay millions in penalty right this needs to be well crafted with the api innovation engine and we should always be audit ready if you consider standard charter we have apis in 44 to 56 countries each country has different and varied set of regulatory uh, rules right there are different data strategy how do you store data how do you uh, kind of uh, deactivate an a token given to an api everything changes from country to country so we need to be well aware of this process and we need to have a well baked api governance framework that's extremely important uh, and that's what standard chartered is doing and we are working with several regulators across the globe right okay if i go to the next slide right we we talked about api how it is you know it's helping innovation now when we look at product product goes through different life cycle when when we when you come up with a product ultimately a product will not survive if we don't have the right clients and customers and if we don't pay we are not you know going to sustain so the product needs to be discoverable how do we make so so the who is embarking on an api journey has to have a well formed api portal and platform like you know slowly the world is moving from portal to platform and platform to marketplace right so we should be discoverable and our services need to be uh, you know validatable when i say validatable all these apis when we go, go give in the open they should they will evaluate us against other companies we should give right sandboxing capability mock service right we should have a clear workflow based uh, an api life cycle management where a client or a startup comes evaluates an api sees whether from a business standpoint does it resonate with my goals if yes i talk to the uh, the backend team quickly i get the needed um, tokens in an automated way and once i have the application ready i should go through a productization journey along with us right that's important and that's where the next part efficiency comes in one the second is we should be able to test uh, use right amount of sandboxing capabilities and then we should have simple easy to comprehend documentation and a sandboxing and platform capabilities right it has to be simple if we throw up like a number of api then people get confused right we should make it very simple the next part is scale 
right? Now you have best of the best APIs, you have the best design sandbox. If we don't get right partners, if we don't get client coverage, then again, right, you will be uh, will not be able to grow. How do you scale? You need to have the right marketing uh, budget to have different set of hackathons, marketing events, and how do we expand our partner and developer ecosystem? We need to have the right amount of documentation, training videos, right? And also entice them with different case studies. Okay, this customer was able to do this because of my APIs, right? That correlation and selling the dream has to be within the uh, API portal, right? That's extremely important. Now, so I gave all this pitch. Now, wh why is it required? Open banking, as I said, it is not very old. I mean, it's not a new concept. It's been there. Um, it's only expanding, right? What is what the slide I have is slightly older, but still in the current scenario, it's only expanding. And banks are totally depending on digital technologies and it is going across the world. It is not specific to India, it's global and everyone uh, in financial domain recognizes it. And regulators are enforcing, like how fast are you able to share the API keys? How fast can your customer use their APIs, right? That's the whole focus. Now, how Standard Chartered is tackling this? We have an externally visible API portal or platform. Uh, we have more than 160 uh, well-crafted digital capabilities across retail and corporate banking. We have a number of customers accessing these APIs. Millions and millions of transactions happen every month. Uh, and we have documentation available how to use this APIs and how it can be used in their context, right? And as I said earlier, these APIs need to have simple documentation, but extremely important is to have sandboxing capabilities, right? I should be able to quickly see how this API works, uh, inject uh, data and see how it responds and download different SDKs in the language that I prefer, right? Each shop is different. Some use Java, some use something else. So we do give options to kind of download code in different languages so that it is com uh, it's completely transparent for them to use. We also have support and chat box, uh, chatbots to help people uh, understand how our APIs work. And more importantly, we work with different corporate clients. Um, it's completely digitized, three-step onboarding process. Um, we don't uh, you know, exchange emails. We are completely digitized three-step process to kind of access our APIs, yeah? Uh, so far I talked about APIs products, API mindset, right? And our external presence, how APIs are given to general uh, clients externally. Now, how do we grow this API mindset? API is not an endpoint, it's a product. The product mindset has to come in. So as a bank, we have a number of initiatives uh, within the bank, which helps uh, employees to kind of support in this journey of bank. We have internal uh, marketplace, uh, collaborative spaces where people can come and contribute, uh, come up with the innovative API ideas. And we kind of evaluate them. If it makes sense, it goes to uh, public use, right? It is. Innovation can happen anyway, right? Anybody can do it. So every developer is part of it. And we have gigs and um, other platforms uh, that helps. So especially uh, in the next slide that I'll cover is each developer has a profile, how much he has contributed to innovation, what is his interest. Everything is tracked. Uh, it is given to highest level of management team. They can identify who is you know, spearheading this type of uh, innovation and disruption. And geeks, hackathons are conducted fortnightly within the bank, and also we invite external developers. So it, it, it's kind of an internal, external partnership that drives a digital um, journey, right? That's what I wanted to uh, cover. Now, coming to an overall architecture, how do we uh, kind of streamline all this energy into a, uh, an API-first uh, product for bank. 
we work with individual clients. We work with legal entities. We also have banking as a platform in different markets. We have microservice-based architecture. We have process and system APIs together fueling the entire digitalization journey of the bank. Right? Uh, if you see, we, we are dependent on a lot of ecosystem providers. API is always an ecosystem drive. So with this, like you know, I want to conclude uh, a brief introduction and how APIs can be uh, thought as products. Any questions? You know, I'm I'm, I'm open to answer. Thank you so much, Vikas, for a very interesting presentation. And like I said, I think this topic is really significant considering the situation we are in and considering the situation, how it is evolving globally as well. Because I think uh, as part of the, specifically APIs have become especially important to banks, uh, I think during the last couple of years, and then it got accelerated in the last one year. And I think the most significant one was the revised payment service directive, which came into effect uh, across Europe in January uh, 2018. And one of the quick question from my side to you is, uh, since we know that there are three main types of APIs, uh, private API, partner API, open or public APIs, which you showcase it quite extensively. Uh, so from your perspective, what do you think as part of the future trend? Do you think there is also a hybrid uh, model that could be something new that could emerge out of everything which we are looking at right now? Or whether it's going to be these three key domains that will be taking things ahead. So would like to know more yeah. from you. It's a very interesting question. So these three models will continue. Uh, hybrid model might come a little later. The reason why I say is there are clients uh, who are totally on to open APIs from a banking point of view. But we also work with a number of clients uh, working in payments uh, and other directives where we have partners and these are kind of not exposed outside. So definitely uh, there are open APIs and partner APIs that will continue. And there are internal APIs because as a bank, we have several hundred components and they are intertwined with these APIs. So internal, internal APIs will anyway continue. Thank you again, Vikas, for answering that. And in fact, uh, what is also interesting to note how the uh, global scenario as well as the Indian scenario is evolving. Earlier, we used to see there ha has been a lot of significant difference. But what we are witnessing right now, specifically in, in the last one year or so, I would mention is uh, the Indian banking landscape with APIs, in fact, developing much faster as compared to other regions as well. And it was really uh, uh, interesting to see the footprints you showed about the open open banking adoptions across the regions, because I think there is tremendous potential from every region still uh, in terms of open banking. And since it is something also aligning with the security perspective, which is, as you know, there has been something more like a Achilles heels for banks to capture specifically in adopting new technologies and domains. So I'm sure with the adoption of uh, APIs, it will be really interesting to see. So before we move to the uh, conclusion of your session, so any parting thoughts would you would like to sh share from the Indian context versus the global context about the open banking as well as the APIs adoption, which you are witnessing personally as well? Yes, definitely. Uh, I, I definitely see more uh, API adoption in India compared to elsewhere. We have a number of uh, things have happened in the last six to eight months, maybe because of pandemic, digital payments, they're all like accelerating like crazy. And I'm seeing India as one of the centers for us. And we do have a quick question from audience from Vivekanan. He said that, mm -hmm. uh, Encouraging outsiders to contributing towards the API developers community. You are also taking care of the IPR related issues. Yes. So this is, yeah. So this yes. is the question from Vimekanand. And I think 
specifically from the banking uh, domain uh, vivekanand and i think vikas can also validate the grc governance risk and compliance is very much mandated so it is ensured that all the components aligning with this is uh, should be definitely mandated so mm -hmm. once again thanks for answering that vikas and uh, like i said initially it, it, it is a pleasure and an honor to have you as part of the speaker lineup at api days live india and we definitely look forward to have more of your co contribution in the upcoming api days events as well so once again thank you so much for your contribution thank you pleasure is all mine thank you